Okay, we're gonna play a little where we at here. And uh well I guess there's a McDonald's sign there, but uh try to get some little ideas of where we're going here. Let me turn this down. So you get a little icon idea here and Well, I could probably tell you lots of things now, like maybe we're in South Cali area doing something uh, around in there, going, fixing to go to a golf course or a resort, Palm Springs area, perhaps it's Florida, something along that line, right? Well, what we're going to go to is what's called Biet Xian Park, National Park. Take a look at this place. Now, all of a sudden, where do you think you're at? Well, it looks like it's been rebuilt by Romans. But there was an ancient city here before. And when you look at these blocks, you can tell whenever they rebuilt it, they rebuilt it out of something previously. There are pieces here that go to something else that's no longer here. And pictographs, that, that's just a piece of the things. But conspicuously, this huge tell shows up behind them. And that's really more in question of what we need to talk about. That tell and the origins of this city before these Romans and things that go with that. So, we're not in Kansas anymore. We're sure not in Florida. And so now with the palm trees we saw and all that, it's got to be yo know, Carthage or someplace. And you can see this amphitheater, and this is one of those places where you can get out there and you can clap your hands and people up there hear it real well. Every word you say, it's perfectly made. So you could, could you know, go with a Carthage type thing, Tunisia, someplace along in there, and where this is and what this place was named, is named. Here's just a few views around the place from different standpoints. Pretty interesting. See if we can get a little more footage here coming up. So not much different than a stadium that people would see. Here you can see pillars being worked on and things just stopped in that and that's that pink or granite, as one type granite that it seems like it is being worked on and it just stopped at one point here. Look at all the pillars of the great temple that was there in the middle of it. Rosettes, arches, designs. Pretty cool looking. Freestanding arches. Sure it'll hold a bunch of weight. But this looks like the ticket entrance to Six Flags or some other event. And it goes to that amphitheater stuff. So, what is this? And, hmm. So, too bad you don't read Greek right now. But if we look on the floors, we start to see conspicuous symbols here. Which kind of let us know what's going on. And then there's a dot sun symbol up here that goes on. It's every other one. Hmm. Getting a feeling here, guys. Well, just to kind of cut through the BS here after we look around for a little bit more. You ever heard of yet El Shadon? Or Xi'an? So here we'd be walking out. In a presentation 
and they would have had extra little things there and pull off some type of drama be talking about all types of subjects here in it tunnels leading in and out of it well where we are is real close to the Sea of Galilee and the ancient name of this place I'll show you here in a minute when we get to it and about that ancient tell and you can see this roadway leading down through there the great procession what it looks like going down to it but when people go there there's this whole staircase it's got to be a hell of a thing to climb but it goes all the way up around and you get to go up onto that top tail point but this is another of those things like go back to the tepi where there's a whole lot that made up this tell and all you're really looking at is this top layer of the cake type situation cool place don't hear about it too much some of these real pale women flowers in their hair hmm you can see the tail on the right here it's angled up almost pyramidic trapezoid shaped here's some of the ancient temple and you can see it's all stippled been hammered and stippled but in reality, what you have is somebody has taken the pictures off of this that used to be here, where there's other pictures that are on here, and they've been all marked off. You can see the lines and scribbles and the way they've run through here. Mm-hmm. Looks like you can almost recognize a few of them, huh? What a girth of these pillars here. Pretty huge. Plaster on the outside seems to be cracking a little bit. But man, don't they go up tall. Look at all these little facades here with all these little symbols in them. And little horseshoe cup shapes and things like that. It's kind of wicked. Looks like it's all put together though with pieces that broke down off the facade of those temples that were there. Kind of a ball bet type situation, huh? Has that look to it? This is the top of a pillar sitting there upside down. And an old valley here that leads to a river we've all heard of, but you never really hear about this place here. Isn't there another little cool shot that I wanted to see? that fit together megalithic stonework here they've got leading in from another way into that same area huh real thick seems like the dude's taking a little bitty steps you can tell this used to be painted here it looks a little reddish all over on the left hand side through there but now we're looking out onto that amphitheater again. Got to be one of the hot spots, and they they apparently kept it, left it in place. So what else we got here? Well, and that's just outside of this town. You can see way in the diff distance there's a little town there. Well, let's look at this place and talk about it more. Because where you really find it listed here is under the ancient city in Israel on the site of modern Beit Shean, right? Bison. Hmm, name sounds familiar. How about 
Sithopolis. You ever heard of Sithopolis? Yeah. There was a city that was the city of the Sith. Historically known as Sithopolis. A city in the northern district of Israel which has played an important role in history due to its geographical location at the junction of the Jordan River and the Jezreel Valley. In the biblical account of the battle of the Israelites against the Philistines on Mount Gilboa, that everybody's pretty familiar with, the bodies of King Saul and three of his sons were hung on the walls of Beit El Shalon. Well, that seems real familiar. Hung, they're saying that Saul, Saul Invictus, Saul, his son, hung on the wall, king Israel, huh? In Roman times, Beit El Shanan was a leading city of the Decapolis. This is a group of city states that they had all the way up through there. You can see uh, Sithopolis there on the left, but Nazareth, and uh, up above it, Capernaum, and everything else, yeah, but Nazareth was founded later. Uh, Jerusalem is also under this. It's a league of pagan cities. In modern times, Beit El Shan serves as a regional center for the settlements in the Xi'an Valley. And let's see what it shows here. Well, there's one of the pools that's there. And the National Park. In the National Park, you can actually see um, the ancient tell that was up here on top and where people had gone. It's like Har Megiddo. You'd know it more of as... Uh, Armageddon by its Greek name in the Bible so it's showing it here now but I swear earlier it was just showing it right there in relation and you can see where we are tucked in here at the top of that and it is Sethopolis let's see if we can find that again if I look at the Decapolis you can see, well, it's down and right of that, and yeah, it's right on the Sea of Galilee, which has to do with the Gauls and Galatians. Yeah, they were right over here like crazy. Oh, one more look here. Uh, up here we have the Yamuk River, and Yam is the name of the sea and the oceans, but down here we have the Jabok River, and... Uh, People have found a long time ago that this is the site, supposedly, where Jacob runs back into Esau. And he realized that he's done him wrong. And he says, oh, Esau, I look like you. is looking like the face of God. And supposed to be where he screwed him over and pretended to uh, trick uh, the elder there that was near half blind. And Jabbok is a play on Jacob as a flip of words like they like to do but that name still exists there to this day oh and one other thing that might be important to this la 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 is if we look over here there's the Rafana that's here Hippus also which is reminded of horses Hippocampus is seahorses and the Dead Sea is right here down from it and off of that is the river Ammon right so in that Betchion's location has always been strategically significant due to its position at the junction of the Jordan River Valley and the Jezreel Valley essential controlling access from the Jordan and the inland coast as well as the Jerusalem and Jericho and to the Galilee Betchion is situated on Highway 9A North South Road which runs the length of Israel the city stretches over an uh, area of seven square kilometers with substantial national park in the north of the city. Beit Shalon has a population of 20,000 today. Today, the town is under the administration of the Amak Regional Council. Prehistoric Chalcolithic period, which is basically the Copper Age before even bronze. In 1933, archaeologist J.M. Fitzgerald, under the auspices of the University of Pennsylvania Museum, carried out a deep cut on the Tell of Hazen. This is the big tell that's over next to it, called Castle Hill, a large tell or mound of Belshan, in order to determine the earliest occupation of the site. 
His results suggest that the settlement began in the late Neolithic or early Chalcolithic period. And so we're looking way back here, 5000 BC, 6th to 5th millennium BC. Occupation continued intermediately throughout the late Neolithic and Chalcolithic periods with a likely gap during the late Chalcolithic period. And there's a problem in there in the collapse of the Bronze Age that happened through this area here. And what we end up finding is we're looking at an area that's uh, controlled by people that are very closely related to the Hittites and people that were of the ancient city of Troy and people like that. I've mean, got a video coming up on Troy, but I can't find the little information that I want to add for one little part of it. So they said the settlement seems to have resumed at the beginning of the early Bronze Age at 3200 and 3000 and continues throughout the period then missing during the early Bronze Age 2 and then resumes in the early Bronze Age 3. So on and off a few times building of the tell, but a large cemetery on the northern mound was in use from the Bronze Age to the Byzantine times. Canaanite graves dating to 2000 to 1600 BC were discovered there in 1926. It starts to abruptly end right there and that is the time whenever the Trojan War happens and all kinds of things go on. In just a few hundred years Egyptian period. After the Egyptian conquest of Belchion by Pharaoh Tutmosis III in the 15th century BC, as recorded in an inscription at Karnak, the small town on the summit of the mound became the center of Egyptian administration in the region. So this area was always under somebody or another. The Egyptian noon covers changed the organization of the town and left a great deal of material culture behind. A large Canaanite temple 39 meters in length, excavated and left a great deal of material culture behind. A large Canaanite temple, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it was found by the University of Pennsylvania Museum, or the Penn Museum, may date from about the same periods as Tut Moses III conquest. Through the Hebrew University excavation suggests that it dates to a later period. Artifacts of potential cultic significance were found at the temple based on stelae, found in the temple inscribed with Egyptian hieroglyphics. The temple was dedicated to the god Michal, so Michael. The Hebrew University excavations determined that this temple was built on the site of an earlier one, right? And uh, let's see some pictures here. There's the government from back in Egypt and they had carved it out and made it look like blocks as you walk down, but it's really solid pretty much looks like looks like they carved it out of it almost like they did the quarry just right to help make it and it's, it's kind of odd what else they got yeah there's a lion and the lioness or some people believe this is a dog and then here's the lion and the dog again and if you look the stars on his shoulder and associated with it and again Leo on his shoulder which later you see Mithra stabbing the same thing but in Taurus if you will so um, during the 300 years of Egyptian rule from the 18th to 20th dynasty the population of Belchion appears to have been primarily Egyptian administrators officials and military personnel the town was completely rebuilt Following a new layout, during the 19th dynasty, the Penn Museum excavations uncovered two important stelae from the period of Seti I and a monument of Ramses the Great. One of those stelae is particularly interesting because, according to Albright, it testifies to the presence of a Hebrew population, the Apirus, which Seti protected from an Asiatic tribe. Pottery was produced locally, but some made to mimic Egyptian forms. Other Canaanite goods existed alongside Egyptian imports and locally made Egyptian-style objects. The 20th dynasty saw the construction of large administrative buildings in Tibet El Shan, including building number 1500, which is a small palace for the Egyptian governor. During the 20th dynasty, invasions of the Sea Peoples which we've talked about a few times, upset Egypt's control over the eastern Mediterranean. 
though the exact circumstances are unclear, the entire site of Bet Xi'an was destroyed by fire around 1150 BC. Egyptians did not attempt to rebuild their administrative center and finally lost control of the region, and that's after the collapse here of the Bronze Age and coming into a period where they can't and, uh, and do anything really in Assyria withdrawals. You know, and they're the only ones that make it out of it. For there are some places that, like the Matani, you don't hear about anymore. The Hittites themselves. What happened to the people of Troy? This, that, and the other. And the scattered remnants of them just went to more greener pastures. According to the Hebrew Bible, around 1000 B.C., the town became part of the larger Israelite kingdom. Kings 4.12 refers to bet as part of the kingdom of Solomon. Hmm, though the historical accuracy of this list is debated, in Iron Age 1, from 1200 to 1000 BC, Canaanite city was constructed on the site of the Egyptian center shortly after its destruction, so it's Canaanite. The Assyrian conquest of northern kingdom of Israel under tilgath pileser coming into 730 BC, brought about the destruction of Betchion by fire, Minimal reoccupation occurred until the Hellenistic period. So, according to the Bible, around 1100 BC, during a battle against King Saul at nearby Mount Gilboa, in 1004 BC, the Philistines prevailed, and Saul, together with his three sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchushua, died. Malchushua died in battle states that the victorious Philistines hung on the, the body of King Saul on the walls of bet -Shion in the Bible. No archaeological evidence was found for the Philippines occupation, or Philistines, sorry, occupation, but it is possible the force only passed there. So if they only just went by there, they just went by there, grabbed the king, killed him, hung him up on the fence and kept going. So the Hellenistic period saw reoccupation of the site under the new name of Sethopolis. Ancient Greek is Sethopolis, possibly named after Scythian mercenaries who settled there as veterans from the wars they had helped them with. Little is known about the Hellenistic city, but during the 3rd century BC, a large temple was constructed on the Tell. It is unknown which deity was worshipped there, but the temple continues to be used during Roman times. Graves dating from the Hellenistic period are simple, singular rock-cut tombs. From 301 to 198 BC, the area was under control of the Ptolemies, and Betchion was mentioned in the 3rd and 2nd century BC, written sources describing the Syrian wars between the Ptolemaid and Seleucid dynasties. In 198, the Seleucids finally conquered the region. <clears throat> so, here we have the Roman period, and Pompey made Judea part of the Roman Empire. Betchion was founded and rebuilt by Gabinius. The town center shifted from the summit of the mound to the tell to its slopes. Sethopolis prospered and became the leading city of the Decapolis group, the only one west of the Jordan River. Ding, ding, ding. The city flourished under what's called the Pax Romana. Um, as evidenced by high-level urban planning and extensive construction, including the best-preserved Roman theater of ancient Samaria. Oh yeah, this is what we've been talking about. Samaria, the Sumerians. Not Sumerians, Samarians. Same thing. Conan the, Conan the Barbarian, he was a Sumerian. Yeah. As well as the hippodrome they have there. Do they going to show it here? Boom. So there's a whole hippodrome where they can do their races. And Cardo. There's a cool place too. Got it built into the walls. Very much like the Persians do and so on. Cardo Maximus. Other trademarks of Roman influence though. Uh, Mount Gilboa is 7 kilometers or 4 miles away. Provided uh, dark basalt blocks as well as water. Via an aqueduct to the town. 
so they had water because of that. Belchion is said to have sided with the Romans during the Jewish uprising of 66 CE. It happened on the sixth month of the sixth day. Hmm, and they sided with them, huh? Yep. I'd go with those Gauls, yeah. Excavations have focused the less of the Romans period, so not as known during the Jewish uprising. Excavations have focused on less focused less on the Roman period, so not as much is known about this period. The Penn University Museum excavation of Northern Cemetery, however, did not uncover significant finds. The Roman period tombs of the Loculus type, a rectangular rock cut spacious chamber with similar chambers cut into its side. Bodies were placed directly into the loculi or inside sarcophagus, which are placed then in the loculi. Loculi. Sarcophagus with an inscription identifying its occupant in Greek is Antiochus, son of Phalion, may have held the cousin of Herod the Great. One of the most interesting Roman grave finds was a bronze incense shovel with a handle in the form of an animal leg or hoof, now in the University of Pennsylvania Museum. And I'm going to show a picture here of it. No, so I'm going to click on it and see if it'll go back. Yeah. So here it is. And what you find in there is those Proto Indo European swirl, da da da. Yep, like a five on a dice. And what it is, is it's finely ornate here. It looks like it almost has hemp leaves here on it here. The other one is pretty much solid. Almost both like made out of swords, right? A sword that broke and they did something else with it. And got, who knows? But it's a uh, pan made to pick up sacred incense. And then the end of it here is hoofed like a little an like an animal's. Which is kind of odd. Huh. So let's go back here. So... Base on, man, there was something cool I was going to tell you about this. Oh, you know I'm getting off on it again. There was a Crusader period. The Lordship of Bashan was occupied to, by Tancred in 1099. It was never part of the Principality of Galilee, despite its location, but became a royal domain of the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem in 1101, probably until 1120, according to the lineages of Lineages, the Al Reamer, the first Crusader lord, Basan, once it became part of the kingdom of Jerusalem, was Adam, a younger son of Robert the Third Bethune, peer of Flanders, and head of the house of Bethune. His descendants were known by the family name of Basan. Hmm. It occasionally passed up under control until new lords were created, becoming part of the Belvoir fiefdom. Went under the Mamluk period and so on like that. British mandate periods. Also, the state of Israel. Look at these symbols that go along with it in a war, you know. Um, hmm, yeah. So, a lot of people didn't know that there's Scythians that deep had a city named after him. Wow. So this is what's going on there now and the reverend, you know, the residents there now. But in ancient times, I mean this is whenever they got their railway. And in ancient times, there used to be a lot of other buildings. You could see the tell in the background there. Let's see if we can see it. That looks like the tell way off in the distance. And uh, behind this building are the Roman-looking type of ruins. Yep. Pretty cool, though. Scythopolis, now known as Bet El Shion. There's part of it. Hmm. A mosaic. Thousands of pieces of tile. Pre painted and cooked out and then laid out like that. Isn't that amazing? There's the tail. 
and I don't see no Roman fortification at all unless this is what's left of it there. It must be on the other side. But that's that looks like the walk up. Maybe there's another one on the other side. But there's stuff that's all up there too. So pretty interesting uh, place here. It has significance. And it uh, shows you something that Sithopolis people probably are not well aware of. For there are many famous sites just right around here in ancient times and people still fighting for it today. You can go 150 miles north of there and start running into quite a different culture we've looked at lately. Anyhow guys, like, share, and subscribe and enjoy and we'll get on to more revealing stories mad at myself for forgetting what I was going to show and expose in that trying to see if it's going to do it Iron Age when we went through that till gas blaster yeah mm, there was one of the connections here that was somewhere and it led to something showed something interesting if I can find it again I'll try to leave it in the links peace